Have you ever wondered what keeps your body upright, fluid, and balanced without collapsing under its own weight? The answer lies in a fascinating principle called tensegritine. Hi everyone, I'm Krista Shirley, a level two authorized Ashtanga yoga teacher and owner of the Yoga Shala here in Maitland, Florida. With over 24 years of experience as a body mechanics expert, I'm here to help you better understand how your body functions, moves, and thrives through the principles of tensegrity. Tensegrity, short for tensional integrity, is a concept that explains how structures, both natural and man-made, maintain stability through a balance of tension and compression. But what does this have to do with movement, biomechanics, and yoga? Well, everything. Take just a moment, wherever you are. Notice how you're sitting or standing. Are you slumping forward? Are your shoulders tense? Is your weight evenly distributed? You might not realize it, but your body is constantly adjusting through a network of tension and compression. That's tensegrity in action. What is tensegrity? Tensegrity is a structural principle that allows for flexibility, strength, and resilience. Unlike rigid structures that rely on solid connections, tensegrity-based systems distribute forces through a network of tension and compression. Think of a suspension bridge where cables hold tension and pillars withstand compression. Now imagine your body working in a similar way. Let's do a quick thought experiment. Imagine a stack of wooden blocks. If you push one, the whole thing collapses. Now imagine a web of rubber bands and sticks forming a structure. If you push one side, the entire system redistributes tension without breaking. Your body is more like the second example. Your bones aren't rigidly stacked. Instead, they float within a dynamic web of muscles, fascia, and connective tissues. This allows movement, flexibility, and resilience without unnecessary strain. Tensegrity in the human body. The traditional model versus tensegrity-based biomechanics. For decades, the human body was viewed through a mechanical lens where bones were thought of as rigid levers and muscles as pulleys pulling on them. In this model, joints were hinge points and movement was thought to occur in isolated segments, like gears in a machine. However, this model is limited because it assumes linear force transmission. One muscle contracts, one bone moves. It assumes a static skeletal foundation, as if bones are stacked like bricks. It assumes that joints are isolated pivots rather than part of an interconnected system. But the human body does not work like a machine with isolated parts. Instead, it functions as a tensegrity structure where bones, muscles, fascia, and connective tissues work together in a dynamic balance of tension and compression. Instead of rigid levers, bones float within a continuous network of fascia and connective tissue which allows for efficient movement. Energy is transferred across the entire body, not just at specific joints. It allows for shock absorption. Distributing force reduces strain on any one area. It allows for dynamic adaptability. The body self-adjusts in response to movement, gravity, and external forces. Let's break down the three key components of this tensegrity-based movement system. Fascia, the body's web of tensegrity. Fascia is the connective tissue that envelops everything, muscles, bones, nerves, and organs. It forms a continuous three-dimensional network that distributes tension throughout the entire body. How fascia contributes to tensegrity. Instead of individual muscles working alone, fascia allows force to spread across the entire body. Fascia acts like a spring 
storing and releasing energy to support your movement. Think of how a Giselle's legs recoil and rebound when running. Fascia holds bones in place within the tensegrity system, preventing collapse or over-reliance on skeletal stacking. Fascia in action. Imagine you pull on the corner of a bed sheet. The entire sheet shifts and adjusts in response. Similarly, if fascia in your calf is tight, it can pull on the hamstrings, causing tension to travel up the spine, which may even lead to neck discomfort. Fascia in yoga. In down dog, tightness in the plantar fascia, or the feet, can affect hamstring length, which in turn limits spinal extension. In back bends, tension in the fascia of the chest and the abdomen can restrict spinal mobility if not balanced by lengthening. In forward folds, addressing fascial connections in the lower back and calves can improve flexibility without forcing the hamstrings alone. Practical tip, slow controlled movements and myofascial release techniques like massage, yoga, and foam rolling help optimize the body's tensegrity system by keeping fascia hydrated and responsive. Myofascial chains. How the body moves as one unit. Instead of muscles working in isolation, the body moves through myofascial chains, continuous lines of tension that integrate different muscle groups into your whole body movement patterns. Key myofascial chains. Your SBL or superficial back line. This runs from the soles of the feet, up the back of the legs, spine, and to the scalp. This explains why tight hamstrings can contribute to back pain or even headaches. The SFL, or superficial front line. This line runs from the toes up the front of the legs, through the abdomen, chest, and to the skull. This chain is engaged in back bends and stretches in forward folds. The spinal line. It wraps diagonally around the body, connecting the opposite shoulder to the opposite hip. This is why twists engage the entire torso and pelvis, not just the spine. Example of myofascial chains in action. Have you ever felt neck tension after a long day of standing? That's often because the superficial back line is under tension from your calves all the way up to your head. In yoga, when you activate your feet properly in standing postures, you engage upward myofascial tension, supporting posture without straining the back or shoulders. Myofascial chains in yoga practice. In Uttanasana, forward fold, releasing tension in the feet and calves can improve flexibility up the entire back line. In twists, like Ardha Matsandrasana or Marichyasana C, proper engagement through the spiral line allows for deeper, safe spinal rotation without stressing individual vertebra. Practical tip. When stretching, think about the whole myofascial chain, not just a single muscle. This leads to more integrated, sustainable flexibility, dynamic stability, a constantly adapting system. Unlike static stability, rigid postures that resist movement, dynamic stability means that the body constantly makes micro adjustments to maintain balance and alignment. How dynamic stability works in tensegrity. Balance is never static. It's a conversation between tension and compression. The body self adjusts to shift in weight and force, preventing collapse. Even in still postures, the body subtly moves, distributing effort across joints and tissues. Example of dynamic stability in action. When you stand on one leg in Vrakasana or tree pose, your ankle wobbles slightly as tiny muscles and fascial lines adjust to keep you upright. In Samastitihi, equal standing posture, 
Standing upright isn't passive. Your body is constantly making small adjustments to maintain equilibrium. In Chaturanga Dandasana, keeping tension across the entire body prevents sagging in the lower back or shoulders. In back bends, the balance between front body tension and back body compression creates a buoyant, open posture rather than a collapsed shape. Practical tip, train for movement, not just static poses. Practicing slow, mindful weight shifts within postures improves balance and stability by engaging the body's natural tensegrity. If you're finding this tutorial helpful, please take a moment and boop that like button, leave a comment, and share this with someone who might enjoy it too. Tensegrity in yoga practice. Now let's connect tensegrity to yoga. In yoga, we're constantly working with forces of tension and compression. The way we engage our muscles, align our joints, and balance flexibility with stability all follow the principles of tensegrity. Examples of tensegrity in yoga postures. Samastitihi, or equal standing posture. You might think that you're just standing, but look deeper. Your feet press into the floor, compression, while your spine lengthens upward, tension. Your core engages just enough to maintain a steady but dynamic balance. Downward Facing Dog, or Adho Mukha Svanasana. Here we see distributed tension and compression from the hands to the heels. The key to avoiding wrist or shoulder strain is using the whole body's tensegrity system instead of collapsing into one area. Backbends, or Urdhva Dhanurasana. Backbends demonstrate tensegrity beautifully. You're not just bending backwards, you're lengthening upwards and outwards while grounding into your hands and feet. This balance prevents strain on the lower back and distributes effort across the entire body. Balance poses like Vrikasana or Warrior or Handstand or Headstand. Balancing isn't about freezing in place, it's about subtle shifts. The tensegrity system allows for tiny, constant readjustments that keep you steady without excess rigidity. Let's try something simple. Lift one foot slightly off the ground and notice how your body responds. Do you feel your core engaging? Your standing leg adjusting? This isn't just muscle activation, it's a full body tensegrity response keeping you upright. The role of breath and tensegrity. Breath plays a crucial role in the tensegrity system. Think of your diaphragm as a dynamic part of the structure. When you breathe deeply, it expands and influences the entire fascial network. Breath techniques that enhance tensegrity. Diaphragmatic breathing. By expanding the rib cage and engaging the diaphragm, we create internal stability that supports the spine and movement patterns. Deep breathing with sound, also known as ujjayi breath. Used in yoga practice to create internal tension that supports postures without overly relying on external muscular force. Bandhas or energy locks. Activating mula bandha or your pelvic floor Uddiyana Bandha, or your lower belly, and Jalandhara Bandha, or your throat lock, creates tensegrity-based stability from the inside out. Let's try a quick breath exercise. Inhale deeply through your nose, feeling your ribcage expand. Exhale slowly, drawing your navel inward towards your spine. Notice how this breath supports your posture and stability. Why understanding tensegrity matters for injury prevention. One of the biggest benefits of understanding tensegrity and movement is injury prevention. When the body distributes force evenly, no single joint, muscle, or ligament takes on excessive strain. 
This is why holistic whole body movement practices like yoga are so beneficial for long-term health and mobility. Key takeaways for injury prevention. Instead of isolating one muscle group, work on integrated movement patterns. Balance mobility and stability. Flexibility without strength leads to instability. Tensegrity allows for fluid strength instead of hypermobility. Rehab and recovery. Healing from injuries is more effective when we address the whole body system instead of just the injured area. When we stop thinking of the body as a collection of parts and start seeing it as a tensegrity system, we unlock a new way of moving, one that is more efficient, balanced, and injury resistant. Tensegrity isn't just an abstract biomechanical principle, it's the foundation of how we move balance, and function. Understanding tensegrity transforms the way that we approach yoga, exercise, and even daily movements. Instead of forcing positions or over-engaging muscles, we learn to move efficiently, distributing tension and compression harmoniously throughout the body. So next time you step onto your mat, feel how your body organizes itself through this beautiful balance. Cultivating this awareness will enhance your yoga practice and help you move through life with greater ease, resilience, and grace. I hope today's video helped you better understand tensegrity and how it influences movement, body mechanics, and yoga. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and tell me what videos you'd like to see next. And if you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It really does support the channel. And if you'd like to take your Ashtanga yoga practice deeper, I offer virtual and in-person Mysore style classes Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern. Whether you're looking to refine your technique, build consistency, or receive personalized guidance, I'd love to help you with your practice. Head to my website to check out the schedule and to book a class. And if you want to keep learning with me here on YouTube, and maybe you're having trouble mastering Prabhjasana from the Ashtanga Yoga Intermediate Series, you might also enjoy a video I recently did on that posture. If you want to check it out, all you have to do is click on it because it's coming up next.